Hey everyone, it's Professor Hank here, and today we're going to talk about how you can return structures from functions. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? So we'll start off by declaring a structure, which we will give a tag of circle. And this is just going to simply store the radius of a circle and the, I don't know, the area of a circle. All right. And so what we can do is we can have a function return a structure just like you can return any other primitive data type. So let us say that we wanted to um, write a function that is going to create a circle, populate it, and return a copy of that circle. Okay, if we were going to do that, we could call it get circle. And what would we use as the return type? Well, if this is going to return an integer, we would use int, right? Well, we're not returning an integer, we're returning a circle. So we're gonna have a return type of circle. Create a local circle variable. Just like if you had created a local integer variable, okay? We're gonna do the same thing. And now we can stuff into that local circle variable, a radius and an area. So we'll ask the user for a radius. See how to enter a radius. Okay. And then we'll read that in straight into the local variables radius, right? The local circles radius. And then we're going to need to calculate an area for that. So we will read straight into the circles area variable, its member the area of a circle. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared, right? So we'll have to do um, the radius times the radius. And then we're going to need to use an approximation for pi. So I'll use 3.14159. And so then we'll multiply this times pi. All right. So now that's going to populate this local circle variable. We're going to put something in its radius member and its area member, right? So now what we want to do is we want to return that circle, right? So we'll just return C. So just like if we wrote a function, you know, that it looks something like this. Okay. And we created a local variable and then had some code here. You know, we could just turn around then and return C, right? Well, it's the same, it's the same thing, right? It's just this time, instead of returning an integer, dealing with an integer, we're dealing with a circle, right? So local variable C, return C, and return type matching what we're returning. Local variable C, returning that local variable, and the data type matching the local variable. It's the same thing. Okay, so let's test it. So we'll create in our main a circle variable, which we'll call P, right? And then we'll assign to P the circle returned by get circle, right? So just like if you had an integer variable, right? And then we called that a foo function, exact same thing, just because it's a struct, so what? Okay, uh, right, so once we've done that, let's print out the area, or the uh, the area and the radius, radius of the circle, right? And then that's gonna be in p dot radius, okay? And then we'll do the area, okay? And p dot area, okay? So let's go ahead and run that. So this is our main, this is our function, and then this is the, uh, the structured definition or declaration. Okay. So we'll enter a radius, say 1.4. Okay. So then you can see that we have success. All right. Everything works just fine. Now, something else I'll point out about this is, um, Another quick little thing is that, you know, normally with a function, you can only return one value, right? So let's say, you know, I write a foo function and 
um, I'm going to have it return an integer, right? So I can have it return 88 or whatever, okay? So that's all good and dandy, okay? Um, but you're only able to return the one value, okay? What happens if I wanted to return multiple values, right? So I might be thinking, well, I'll do something like this, right? Well, you, you can't do that. Okay, it doesn't work like you think it would. Something like this will work in Python, sure, but take a look at what it gets actually set to see out, right? Just the two. All the previous values in the series get ignored, right? So what we can do to kind of get around this is we can create a structure. I'll call it nums, right? And so in here, I'll put four uh, integer variables. Okay, and then in foo, I'll initialize a nums with those values. So 88, 3, 9, 2. And so now I can return that nums struct. Okay, and so in that way, uh, let's make sure we got the right return type here. So in that way, I'm actually returning four values. I'm not just stuck with returning one. It's like I'm returning one because it's a single structure, but inside of that structure, I've um, placed multiple values, right? So we'll just do a similar kind of thing like we did with circle here. And uh, we'll call foo. And then from there, we can access the individual values, right? So p.w, p.x, p.y and p.z. All right, so in that way, it's uh, kind of fooling C++, right? I mean, we can get around that limitation of only assigning, you know, or being able to return one value. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.